Uh, good morning everybody uh, so in today's class we will deal with uh, gastropoda uh, in our previous class we discussed about the some of the common morphological features and terms of class gastropoda and also we came to know that uh, gastropods are one of the most diverse group of organisms and actually it is the second most uh, diverse group after insects gastropods can live in a variety of environments they can successfully live in uh, marine water as well as fresh water conditions and also they can live in terrestrial or land conditions now if we look at the gastropod shells the outer surface or the outline of the gastropod shells are defined that is the plane consisting the coiling axis the outer surface what it looks like according to that we define the whole profile say for example for this gastropod the outer from the outer surface this surface is a convex surface so the whole profile for this gastropod is convex and you can see in every side the outer surface is convex in nature similarly for this second case you can see the outer surface is more or less flat in all sides in the axial plane of this gastropod so you can call the whole profile of this gastropod as flat and also like the other two the whole profile may be concave also so broadly three types of whole profile of gastropods are found in nature convex then flat or concave but sometimes if we look at the gastropod shells like in these two pictures the whole profile which starts from one suture to the base of the hole or to next suture that is not simply defined by the previous terms like convex concave or flat instead what we found that the entire hole is divided into two segments in the upper part near the suture or that is the posterior part of the hole where we found a more or less flattish area and that is separated by a high angular portion this portion uh, from the rest of the whole face this is the rest of the whole face so we see that a angular portion is basically separating here you also you can also see this angular portion separating this part and this part so this angular portion which separates the two differently inclined portion of the whole this angular portion is known as shoulder now the portion which occurs posteriorly to the shoulder that is this part if it is flat more or less horizontal then we call it as shelf and if it is slightly inclined like this one you can see the inclination this is inclined slightly then we called it as ramp so when we found the whole surface in this fashion we define the whole profile as the whole profile consists a ramp either ramp or shelf which is separated from rest of the whole surface by sharply angular or uh, gently angular or broadly angular shoulder one thing you should note that ramp or shelf present both cannot present in one gastropod shell either it will be shelf or it will be ramp and if ramp and shelf present in a shell then definitely that is separated from rest of the part that is the anterior part of the shell by some 
angular portion that angular portion may be very sharp like this case or it may be broadly rounded like this case so shoulder must present when ramp and shelf is there and shoulder is separating the ramp and shelf portion from the rest of the whole surface next coming to the shell shape now the shell shape of gastroboard may be of different types form it's look the third type in this picture see here so this type of shell is known as trochiform shell next come the biconical here you can see two inverted cones are occurring opposite to one another one at this side and the other at this side so as two cones occur invertedly towards each other this type of shell form or shell shape is known as biconical the, the difference between trochiform and turbiniform is almost they looks same by its broadly conical shape but the difference is in trochiform the base is flat whereas in turbiniform the base is rounded next come the natisiform or globular shell shape it looks like a ball simply form or globular in shape cypriform uh, it is a more or less convolute gastropod shell where almost all the previous holes are overlapped by the next hole so earlier holes are almost impossible to observe externally the shell has high convexity also next basal side you can see these ends also pointed or tapers also this end pointed and tapers so as it looks like a spindle from therefore uh, this type of shell form is known as fusiform apart from this often scientists or researchers found this kinds of gastropod shell where you can see the whole formation is not in a regular manner sometimes holes are not touching with each other sometimes they touch differently at different places uh, this type of irregular formation of gastropod shell with no particular pattern and mostly the holes are opened not touching the previous holes is known as vermiform gastropod shell now in terms of angle towards the apical part the gastropod shells have two measurable parameters one is the apical angle which is the angle subtended from the apical successive holes by drawing two tangents from two sides here you can see from the apical holes two successive holes connected tangents are drawn on two sides of the gastropods and the angle between them is known as the apical angle but sometimes it is found that the apical holes are not present in gastropod shell so in that case we draw two tangents touching two successive holes of gastropods from the later ontogeny here you can see these holes are much later formed and we can also draw tangent touching these two holes from two sides of the gastropods and also the angle formed by these two lines known as pleural angle now generally in most cases apical angle and pleural angle are same for gastropods but sometimes it was found that apical angle and pleural angle are not same it varies through gastropod ontogeny as you can see in this picture here apical holes are present and if you draw the apical angle apical angle should be like this so you can see this will be the apical angle which is much higher or often obtuse in amount but if you look at the pleural angle in later ontogeny you can see the angle becomes much smaller it becomes acute so these kinds of change in 
angular relationship in the apical part and in the latter part of the gastropod holes that means change in apical angle and pleural angle indicates that there must be a change in hole expansion rate through ontogeny when the apical angle is obtuse and pleural angle is acute it indicates that hole expansion rate reduced with ontogeny oppositely when apical angle is acute and during later ontogeny pleural angle become becomes uh, obtuse it indicates that hole expansion rate increases during later ontogeny but in most cases like this picture here you can see apical angle and pleural angle remains same throughout the uh, life cycle of the gastropod next an important uh, change from the its uh, earlier forms to butterfly and that is we called uh, metamorphosis similarly in gastropod also we observed a very uh, interesting phenomenon that happens in its juvenile stage or more specifically in the veliger stage uh, that we called torsion and this incident was found to occur in all gastropods dekhte pachhis gastropods which are primarily bilaterally symmetrical if you look at this gastropod from a top view this is the uh, shell this is the mouth and all the sensory organs these are the antennas and the entire part uh, basal part is the soft mass which uh, used as food uh, opposite to the mouth occurs the anus and all the gills occurs in between also the mental cavity and gills occur uh, in this posterior part so you can clearly uh, divide the gastropod shells into two equal halves in this uh, portion now in torsion or in veliger stage what happened there is an asymmetrical growth occurs in gastropod most precisely the right larval retractor muscle that retract asymmetrically in this side there occurs a retractor muscle that retract asymmetrically and as a result the entire visceral mass consisting of all the digestive tract the nervous system the respiratory tract are twisted in a u shape pattern it takes a u type bend and what happens that when the torsion is complete the entire soft mass including the mental cavity gills all things they twist at 180 degree relative to the head so we can you can see that after twisting above the mouth if you see this picture here is the mouth before torsion and here is the gill and anus and here twisting occurs or torsion starts and after twisting mouth remains same at its position and over the mouth just above the mouth occurs the mental cavity anus all the organs now we all know that uh, mouth is the organ from where gastropods and we all take food that is our intaking portions uh, in contrast anus is the portion from where gastropods excrete its uh, unwanted material to the external environment now the problem arises due to this portion uh, due to this torsion that immediately over the mouth immediately over this portion the anus rejects or excretes all the unwanted material so there becomes a chance of fouling that whatever excreta gastropod removes from its body 
just above the mouth uh, when gastropod takes food that excreta is also taken by the individual so it becomes a problem but the thing is this type of twisting of entire gastropod body mass is found in almost um, all gastropod individuals not almost all but it is found in all gastropod individuals and this is this phenomenon is known as torsion now scientists try to find if these kinds of fouling occurs in gastropods due to torsion that means it is a problem it is not advantageous to gastropods so what are the reason behind this torsion that every gastropod uh, have to uh, face this kind of twisting of its soft mass so several scientists suggest uh, several reasons for this torsion uh, like some suggest that uh, this torsion provides space for the larva to retract the head and foot into the mental cavity for better uh, protection mechanism so they can efficiently uh, retract the foot and uh, head portion in an efficient way within the gastropod shell uh, to protect from their enemies uh, some scientists suggested that torsion occurs uh, when the larva uh, which is in planktonic mode they starts settling towards the uh, water bottom and during this settling due to the torsion uh, this basically helps to uh, maintain or to balance the load over their head the load is the uh, gastropod shell calcareous hard part to balance the shell over their head this kinds of torsion helps us during settling from planktonic to benthic stage uh, other scientists suggest that torsion also um, occurs uh, in the body mass of gastropods for better swimming it was also suggested that torsion is basically uh, occur in adult stage and uh, basically this um, mental cavity and um, anus bring forwarded to the shell by the gastropods so that they can regularly wash and clean the gills and we all know that gill is basically a sieve which basically uh, sieve the uh, required or desired things from the unwanted or waste products so it it's a basically screen uh, which uh screen the wanted and unwanted things so uh, it requires regular uh, washing so that the screening so that the sieving can be done efficiently so due to that some workers suggested that as there was uh, water flow mostly in the anterior part of the gastropod shell so that is why gastropods bring forward the gills and all the anus portions uh, other famous workers like uh, stanley they suggested that gastropods bring the uh, head and anus parts in the forward part because when they feel threat they can uh, easily retract their body mass into the gastropod cells and as we know the operculum which is the which is acts as a door to the gastropod cells that actually uh, attached in the posterior part of the gastropod shell so that can when gastropods retract within the gastropod shell that can basically close easily and fits with the uh, aperture and therefore gastropods can close their entrance so in this way if you if both things are uh, 
occur over one another they can be retracted easily and as operculum attached in the posterior part they can better close the aperture so like this way there are many theories there are many explanation in support of this torsion but the thing is not a single explanation not a single hypothesis can explain the full uh, advantage of torsion so it was thought that torsion is real it is found in every gastropods but it is not so simple maybe there includes more than one reason behind this torsion now after torsion as we found they, through which they can intake fresh water nutrient rich water and uh, eject the excreta rich water in two different directions and during that they formed some kinds of pores some kinds of uh, openings within the gastropod cells which occurs uh, in the whole surface much uh, in different direction compared to the um, side from which gastropods take the nutrient rich fresh water so thereby in the cell surface at the lateral surface of the gastropod cells often it was found to uh, gastropods bear some kinds of holes here as you can see in this picture gastropod in the lateral surface uh, it bears some kinds of holes and these holes function uh, basically that is a different direction from where gastropod takes the incoming or inhalant uh, nutrient rich water and gastropod try to uh, separate the excreta rich water through these holes uh, into different directions so that fouling should be minimized now in some gastropods these holes occurs in singular number all in a or in a series of holes these holes are called trema trema is singular and in plural it is called as tremata now often the holes becomes continuous and they occur in a series of uh, or is a portion of channelized openings like in this portion here it is not a single hole but like a continuous opening again the purpose is same the gastropods takes the incoming water from the um, anterior portion that is from the basal part which is the anterior portion and it tries to separate out the excellent current which is excreta rich uh, within a different direction either it is from the middle part of the shell or it tries to push back more towards the posterior side so often uh, we found a continuous band uh, having the slits and that is the opening which is uh, for the uh, excluding the excreta rich water and this bands basically signifies the portion from which gastropods rejects or expels their excreta rich water uh, this bands you can see that it is far uh, protruded than the original apertural portion the original apertural portion is here and this band is much protruded than the original apertural margin and that basically uh, here you can also see original aperture margin is in this portion and there is a protrusion far behind the original opening so in this way basically gastropod try to separate the two channels into different directions so that fouling uh, should be less occur in other gastropods some advanced form gastropods uh, are able to form two different channels in two sides of the aperture one in the anterior side one in the posterior sides in some gastropods the channel is very distinct 
as you can see in this gastropod in the anterior part here you can see also uh, in the anterior part when the channel is very distinct and large enough we call them as canal we call them as canal or uh, from this canal a soft tubular mass extension occurs uh, which is also known as uh, siphon uh, so this canal is known as siphonal canal and as this canal uh, occurs in the anterior part of the gastropod it is called anterior siphonal canal likewise canal can also found or this uh, tubular path can also found in the posterior part of the gastropod cell uh, then we called it as posterior siphonal canal but often uh, instead of forming these kinds of large canal gastropods occur some small notches small uh, channels or small protrusions in the posterior part of the uh, aperture as you can see in this picture here you can see a small indentation small groove occurs in the posterior part of the aperture so then we call this as siphonal notch now depending on the position where that it occurs in the anterior side or posterior sides uh, we call them as anterior siphonal notch or posterior siphonal notch so you can see gastropods try to solve the fouling which occurs due to torsion uh, during its incoming uh, or inhaling water and excellent water they try to solve in different way different gastropods try to solve in different way some form strema these uh, discontinuous pores within the gastropod cells some form a continuous band of uh, protrusion uh, and with successive growth they form a band like appearance which calls slit band or selenizone and some gastropods form distinct siphonal notch or uh, canal even if you look at uh, some gastropods they try to detorsion into their adult stage that means what happens into the torsion stage that is a uh, rotation of all the visceral mass uh, in a u shape taking a u shaped band uh, they try to open it out like it occurs in a previous or early juvenile stage they try to straighten out and try to locate the uh, mount and anus in two oppositely facing directions but during this detorsion some gastropods often sacrifice their entire protective hard part often you uh, found some uh, land gastropods in some trees or in our um, in any constructions in buildings uh, you found some gastropods which composed or which consist of entirely soft bodied and there is no hard part there is no protective hard part and that hard part they have to sacrifice during detorsion processes so in this way uh, many way gastropod uh, face the difficulty of torsion uh, and they try to solve in their own way some formed trema some form slit band some form siphonal notch or siphonal canal and some land gastropods or even some marine gastropods also uh, they during detorsion uh, they have to sacrifice their uh, entire hard uh, protection uh, cover that is the entire hard shell now if we look at the aperture of the gastropods in this time when the gastropods aperture is entire that is they are not uh, interrupted by any kind of notch uh, then we call them as hollow stomatas hollow stomatas aperture uh, sorry there is a spelling mistake here uh, hollow stomatas aperture means there is no uh, protrusion either in kinds of uh, slit band or siphonal notch or siphonal canal the entire aperture is marked by a uh, simple uh, outline without any protrusion 
then we call those aperture as holostomatous aperture. In contrast, when the apertural margin is interrupted by some siphonal canals or siphonal notches uh, for the protrusion of siphon, then we call this kind of aperture as siphonous stomatus aperture. So, any aperture which bears any siphonal canal or siphonal notch or slit band, it is siphonous stomatus aperture and aperture lacking these kinds of uh, interruption uh, that is known as holostomatous aperture. Now, if you look at the external surface pattern of gastropod shell, particularly the ornamentation, uh, which occurs into some kinds of uh, relief, some kinds of ridges on the shell surface of gastropods. Mainly two types of ornamentation are found in gastropod shells and uh, on their superimposition and their different strength, they formed different patterns. The first type, which is known as axial ornamentation, this is basically parallel to the axis of coiling. You can see if this is our gastropod shell and this is the axis of coiling, all these elements are parallel to the axial axis of coiling. So that is why this style of uh, ornamentation is known as axial ornamentation. In contrast, the spiral type of ornamentation occurs along with the growth of the uh, gastropod shells that is it is parallel to the spiral motion of the gastropod shells so uh, in other way you can also say that it is perpendicular to the axis of coiling and gastropods basically uh, grow in this direction that is the spiral motion of growth so this elements this ornamentation are actually parallel to this spiral motion of growth so that is why they are known as spiral ornamentation so parallel to the axial elements parallel to the axis of coiling any element any ornamentation is known as axial ornamentation parallel to the spiral growth of the uh, gastropod shell is known as spiral ornamentation now the axial elements or any uh, feature which is uh, towards axis inclined or directed towards axis that is known as ad apical a d a p i c l ad means towards ad apical means towards apical side similarly away from the apex that is ab apical a b ab means away from the apex so towards apical side towards apex is ad apical away from the uh, apex is ab apical any axial elements or any kind of ornamentation that is inclined or directed towards the axis of coiling that is known as ad axial as you can see in this arrow lines that is directed towards the axis of coiling that is why ad means towards axis ad axial and away from the axis of coiling as directed by these arrows that is known as ab axial ab means away from the axis of coiling now axial elements can also uh, specifically termed by their inclination here you can see one basically one axial element uh, extends from one suture to another suture here it is one suture and here it is another suture this is a this is uh, one hole now within one hole when the axial elements is neutral that is they neither inclined towards the growing direction nor inclined opposite to the growing direction then we call those axial elements as orthoclide when axial elements are inclined towards the growing direction, we call them as prosocline. When axial elements inclined opposite to the growing direction, we call those axial elements opistocline. Now, in the, all these three, orthocline, prosocline, and opistocline, 
the axial elements are straight and these straight elements are uh, found to occur over a curved as you can see whole profile is convex in nature over a convex surface so that is why this uh, prosocline and ophistocline uh, axial elements are appear somewhat curved to you uh, because it's a three dimensional thing you are observing uh, in a two dimensional picture but basically uh, these are straight lines but sometimes the axial elements are not straight it becomes curved as you can see in these two types when the curvature closes towards the growing direction then we call those axial elements as process hard axial elements and when the curve axial elements closes opposite to the growing direction we call them as opistos hard uh, axial element now uh, one thing you may have a uh, question or you may have a into your mind that what is the growing direction as we already discussed in our previous class that most of the gastropods are right hand or dextrally coiled now in a dextrally coiled uh, gastropods always you can find that this cinchural line is basically inclined or tilted in the left hand side if this uh, was a sinistrally coiled gastropods then this cinchural line is slightly tilted in the right hand side so from this partial picture of the entire gastropod shells simply by observing the uh, tilting of this suture line you can get an idea about the uh, coiling direction of the gastropod shells so as is dextrally coiled gastropod that means uh, right hand coil so always the younger direction or growing direction is towards the left hand side the gastropod grows uh, starting from the this side to gradually go into these and again rotates again come into this side in this way so this side the left hand side is my growing direction and according to this growing direction when the straight uh, axial elements incline to the growing direction it is prosocline oppo straight axial elements inclined opposite to the growing direction then it is opistocline neutral is orthocline when carved axial elements closes towards growing direction it is process art and closes opposite to growing direction it is obvious art now in some gastropods you may often found at different regions uh, there is a sharp band and these bands you can see as in this portion there is a sharp change in the orientation of uh, axial elements axial ornamentation as you can see all these elements axial elements are coming almost uh, parallel to the axis but suddenly after reaching this portion the axial elements almost becomes very gentle or almost becomes horizontal and due to this sharp change in inclination of axial elements there forms a band this band is known as fascial mostly it is found in the um, basal part or close to the basal part of the gastropod shell uh, so this kinds of band indicating sharp change or sudden change in the orientation of axial elements of gastropod uh, external shell surface ornamentation is known as fascial even in some gastropods uh, we often observe there is a axial elements uh, which appears a coarse ridge like manner as you can see in this uh, picture this axial elements is very coarse and occurs uh, in a ridge like manner and occurs at a regular interval with the gastropod uh, growth uh, this basically indicates a growth pause so as the entire whole the if you look at the whole outline this is the whole outline this is the outer leaf of the aperture and similarly the inner leaf also so during this time when these coarse ridge like uh, axial elements occurs uh, for a certain period time 
the growth of the gastropod ceases at that point but during this growth pause there will be production of calcium carbonate hard part so calcium carbonate secretion calcium carbonate production from the mantle cavity is still going on but the gastropod cell is not growing in the uh, forward or growing direction now the amount of calcium carbonate is basically stored in this uh, position and that forms a uh, coarse ridge like uh, axial elements which is known as varix so these varix are always axial elements these are much coarser and occurs throughout the entire hole and they occur in a regular interval sometimes in gastropod cells you, you may found varix in 120 degree interval in every 360 degree complete uh, rotation that means in every hole you may found three varix or uh, often in some gastropods you may found in uh, four varix in uh, one complete rotation that means four varix in one hole so like this way uh, there will be a fixed angular uh, distance after which the varix occurs and that indicates that during that time uh, the gastropod growth was paused but cell secretion uh, cell material secretion is still continuing so those calcium carbonate uh, are uh, gathered and positioned in an axial a parallel axis parallel line during the formation of these coarse axial ridges and that is known as varix apart from varix often you found some um, very sharp pointed uh, needle shaped elements which are known as spines and that spine can occur in different regions as you can see here is a spine occurs in varix and these spines can be of different uh, strength as you can see this spine is much coarser compared to these spines these spines are relatively weaker uh, similarly uh, often gastropod cells contain some um, elliptical extension of uh, ornamentation some elliptical small ridges uh, which may be either axial or spiral and these are known as tubercles and the if these ridges becomes circular then we call them as nodes so uh, circular in appearance of a elevated portion within the gastropod cells it is known as node and when this is elliptical that means uh, in some direction it is slightly elongated in appearance these elevated portions then it is known as tubercle so these are the different kinds of uh, gastropod cell surface ornamentation and also there are others uh, found in the gastropod cells which results on the superimposition of axial and uh, spiral elements now apart from the uh, often we found some indentation or very found denticulation at different position of the gastropod cells some in some gastropod cells there is no indentation that is no teeth in some gastropod cells like our cypria uh, here we found indentation or teeth like appearance in both uh, outer lip and inner lip in some gastropods you can see teeth like appearance only found in the inner lip and particularly within the inner lip in the columnar portions not the entire inner lip but particularly the columnar portions sometimes teeth is found or indentation is found in the uh, only in the outer lip and also sometimes in some gastropod cells teeth or indentation is found within the um, this uh, axial central void axial portion that is the uh, portion which is uh, which resulted when the 
uh, inner ma inner margin of the aperture is not fused uh, with within the with one another that is the parietal portion uh, and this parietal opening if you can see that is indented uh, by these small numerous uh, elements so teeth can occur or this kind of indentation can occur in different positions or almost all uh, a gastropod may be uh, entirely this kind of indentation less so any combination can occur teeth, uh, either it may be indentation less or teeth may occur in uh, both outer lip and inner leaf teeth may occur particularly in the inner leaf portion uh, teeth may occur particularly in the outer leaf portion and sometimes it is in the parietal opening also so that's all that's a uh, brief idea about the gastropod shell morphology and uh, here is the book from which you are suggested to uh, go through thank you